In this video, we're going to take a quick look at Android Studio. First things first, to download Android Studio, just go out and do a search for Android Studio. Here's a link, download, download Android Studio, and it does a good job of describing what you need to do to download Android Studio. So uh, I won't repeat what they have because they do a good enough job themselves. Click on that link. Uh, this includes the integrated development environment, which we're going to take a look at the uh, Android SDK tools, and the latest images for Android. So, when we load Android Studio, we're going to get something that looks like this. With uh, one note, yours probably won't have anything in it yet, where I have an existing project. And also a tip of the day, uh, don't just dismiss those. There are a lot of really good hints here. So uh, what we have on the left is a project window that's going to show us all of the files that make up our project. Over on the right, we have a set of tabs, and that's where our source code and our layouts are. And then at the top, we have a place where we can play or debug a program. So to start a program, I'm going to choose File, and I'm going to say New Project. And I might call this something like Plant Places. 15FS. And as you see down here, company domain, edu.uc, that's typically your domain name in reverse. So like com.plantplaces for plantplaces.com or edu.uc for uc.edu. Many times I'm tempted to use my Bearcat ID as well, Jones BR, uh, or maybe our college, CECH, something to identify us just because uh, uc.edu is such a large domain. You'll see at the bottom it's going to create a package name. This name is important because it is your unique identifier with, one moment please, it's your unique identifier with the Google Play Store. So essentially you can have one app per uh, domain name. If you take a look at this one, Blackboard Mobile, uh, the unique identifier is the ID here, which is com.blackboard.android. If I, I can, of course, search for anything, but if I switch this to com.plantplaces, uh, that'll take me to the Plant Places mobile app as well. So uh, choose wisely when you're choosing a domain, a domain name. So now I'm going to choose next. Uh, okay, uh, API 4.0 minimum SDK. That's, you know, at this point, that's going to target quite a few devices, 87.9%. Too high on that, and you might eliminate some of your audience. If you choose too low on this, um, then you might not have all the features available to you that you want. So think carefully about this. I typically target for 4.0. Uh, I'll go ahead and choose next, and uh, we'll start with the blank activity. That's fine. And next again. And uh, the main activity, I'm going to call it GPS a plant. And you see what it's going to do is create an activity, which is the Java class that's going to handle things like button clicks and any other logic that we need to program against. It's also going to give us a layout, uh, which is an XML-based way that we can configure the buttons and the widgets and the text boxes that are on our screen. Uh, then a title. Uh, GPS a plant. We'll just go ahead and add some spaces there. Uh, menu resource name, that's the name of the XML file that will configure the menu for our app. So with that, I will choose finish. And we'll give it a moment to create this. And then what I want to show next is uh, the ability to run or debug this in an emulator. Our application is rendered. You see under res, we have this activity GPS a plant. That's the look and feel that we're going to have uh, on, our, on our very first screen. I'm going to go ahead and select App, and I don't have anything to debug just yet, so I'm going to hit Play. Now, a warning here, this is going to raise up the emulator, which is basically a way that we can look at the program running on our local computer. You can also plug in a phone, uh, an Android device, uh, with your IDE charging, well, your data sync cable usually a charging cable, and you can run it directly on that device. Some people prefer that. A lot of people do because, honestly, it takes it can take a long time to load the emulator depending on your computer. If it does take a long time, one thing you can look at is something called Intel Haxm, H-A-X-M. 
and go ahead and choose launch emulator here in just a moment. Uh, that basically makes some efficiencies in how the emulator is virtualized. I have a separate video on that. That's a separate subject. Uh, take a look at that if you find your emulator is running slowly. If you were to plug a phone in you or a device, you would see it up here. So launch emulator. I have some pre-configured emulators here. Uh, if I didn't have one, I would simply click on the ellipsis and create a new emulator. But my AVD19 is pretty trusty. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And in just a moment, it will bring up this AVD. And you see now the AVD is loading. So the Android virtual device is basically an Android phone emulator. It comes with the Android development toolkit. Uh, usually it will come with your uh, Android Studio as well. Uh, as Android releases new versions, a lot of times if you want to program against that version, you need to update the emulator as well. There's a, uh, uh, there's a Android SDK manager that will allow you to do that. Okay. Uh, looks like I'm a bit low on storage, but nonetheless, what typically happens now is it will load our program. And you see in just a moment, here we go, it's loaded our program. Not a whole lot to it yet, just a title, a default menu, and a label. In our next video, we're going to add a button, and we're going to see how we can use the debugger to step into what that button is doing. I look forward to seeing you then.